Hi, Dr. Alex here, and welcome to installing an NVMe SSD in a T430 ThinkPad, or indeed any classic ThinkPad. Just a little video showing you how I finally achieved the impossible and got an NVMe drive working with ThinkPads that were never designed to interface with an NVMe drive, indeed were all produced before NVMe even became a thing. So why did I want an NVMe drive in the ThinkPad? Well, I've been experimenting with the mSATA slot, which I just discovered these things have, which in terms of performance is just the same as the large SATA slot that's inside for a standard hard drive or solid state drive with the large form factor, the 2.5 inch width box that you shove in there. The mSATA slots are obviously smaller. The drives that go in there are smaller. They take up less room but otherwise are identical to the SATA drives. They have the same number of pins, the same throughput in terms of data transfer speed. So there's no speed advantage to mSATA over SATA. But it did make me think about the things that are similar to SATA in terms of their smallness, NVMe drives, which we can't use. But all those classic ThinkPads, and by classic I mean the ones using generations 1, 2, and 3 Intel processors, i3, i5, i7s of those generations, and the ThinkPads that were associated with them, the T400s, 500s, I mean, the 410, the 420, the 430, the 510, did that exist? The 520 and the 530 all use generation 1, 2, or 3 Intel i processors. And I've been recently concentrating on upgrading them as far as possible. Well, I've gone pretty much as far as I could, except if only you could get an NVMe drive into them. They don't have an NVMe slot. You can't plug an NVMe drive into an mSATA or SATA slot. And if you could, they don't have the same data throughput. You won't get the advantages you get, even if you could somehow shove them in there. So it looked like this was a hiding of nothing, a dead end. This is as far as you could go. Except those classic ThinkPads, and by classic, I kind of mean those that had the classic 7th row keyboard or could be upgraded to them, and had those early Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 processors, did have express card slots, 34 millimeter. I think in some of the early ones they had the 54 millimeter ones. Anyway, they have express card slots and those do have a higher data throughput than mSATA. And kind of reflecting this, the only thing you can really get to shove in those slots are USB 3 port expansion boards, which great, but it's not the most exciting thing you could get. Yeah, okay, they're faster than the USB 2 slots that came in these classic ThinkPads, but well, it's hardly earth shattering what you can do with them. Yeah, okay, they've got them. But I started to do research and see if you could install somehow an NVMe drive in that PCI Express card slot. I discovered two things very early on. On eBay, I of a card that was slot into the PCI Express card slot, but it bulged out the side with the NVMe drive sitting on a plate that sits out the side of it. Now I bought it and I'm using it. The purpose of that is basically to use it for an external storage interface instead of using SD cards and other less than fantastic external storage devices. I can just put the very cheap NVMe drives that are available on that board and have a very quick external drive that I can put films, for example, science documentaries, all that stuff. I can just stick them on NVMe cards and keep them separately in little pouches in a little library of awesomeness somewhere. Using the external NVMe drive card slot, I could see how much faster that drive was than even the internal mSATA drives and SATA drive SSD drives that the ThinkPads were running with as their main drives. The second reason I knew this should be possible is the amazing looking ThinkMods upgrade, which if you go to this site you can see they have the very thing I'm talking about. They have a special express card card which you can put an NVMe drive in and will use it as another hard drive. At this point, I thought, well, that's it. I just need to find something like this. You might say, why am I not buying the ThinkMods one? Well, it's quite expensive, like $40 plus postage. Not the worst, but you know, more expensive than you might like. But also unavailable. They're completely backlogged with their orders. You cannot order them now because they've got a huge backlog with people who've already ordered it. So wonderful though I'm sure it is, you can't get it. So I needed to find one you could actually obtain. I was amazed at the ones that displayed the external one that flaps out the side had not designed one where it fits inside because that would just be surely the most desirable way you could do it. And then I looked online and finally found one that was not the ThinkMods one, 
It was not on eBay. It was on Alibaba. Now, I have an Alibaba account, but I've never used it. So this is the first time I've ever ordered anything using AliExpress slash Alibaba. But to their credit, I ordered it. And within four or five days, it arrived pretty quick, maybe even quicker than that. And it was exactly what it said on the tin. It came disassembled. The three bits um, were all separate. Um, I mostly assembled it. I actually put one of the external covers on and left the other one free, just so it's more easy for me to swap NVMe drives in and out of it without me having to disassemble the metal case. But I put it together. I shoved it in my T430, which, as you know from the previous video, is basically here just for testing out these weird ideas. And just like the external one I'd bought before, the T430, when booted up, could see the NVMe drive, could use it, could put anything I liked onto it. I then installed Linux Mint 18, which it was already running with the T430 on its M SATA drive, on the NVMe drive in parallel. It was all there. All the files were there. I could see it. I tried to reboot. I tried to log out and log back in. And the BIOS can't see it as a bootable drive. This is the big problem with the older classic laptops. They can't see NVMe drives. The BIOS cannot read NVMe drives as bootable hard drives, it seems. There are ways around this. If you could get your hands on the ThinkMod one, apparently it's got a little bit of hardware gubbins built into it, which will bypass this problem and enable your older ThinkPads to see it as a bootable drive through the BIOS. Alternatively, you could stick some jumpers onto cables on the back of your motherboard and do the core boot upgrade, but that's a level of hardware jiggery I just didn't want to do. I had a T420 with its BIOS locked one time and I tried to short the jumpers on the appropriate cables on the motherboard and it was just too much hassle to get at and to do and I just couldn't do it effectively. So there was no way I was going to be trying to do a hardware modification on the motherboard, attaching myself to cables on chips to try and get this thing to see an NVMe drive. I figured there must be a way to do this using software or it's just not worth the hassle. Which leads me to how I actually accidentally managed to get the T430 to see the NVMe drive without any hardware modifications, and it can even boot up from it. Amazing but true. Whether I can replicate this is a whole other question, and there'll be a follow-up video to this to see if I really did replicate what I did, but it's definitely working for now, and I'll show you that shortly. As I already mentioned, um, I had installed Mint 18 on the NVMe drive, but it couldn't see it. So I tried to install it again, and for whatever reason, I decided instead of doing the standard way of installing it in parallel, which it wouldn't allow, to be fair, um, it wouldn't allow you to install Mint in parallel with the one that already existed on there on another drive for some weird reason, although it's supposed to be able to do that. I went into the advanced install for Mint 18, which allows you to set up another drive manually to accept an install. I did it the correct way. I set up the partitions with a bootable standard EXT4 partition plus a swap partition, basically mimicking exactly what was on the M SATA drive that was already there. And as I said, I installed it and it failed to see it on the BIOS, so it couldn't see the drive to boot up. So I did the stupid thing. I went back into the live boot onto the Mint 18 CD, set up the drive again, but this time asked it to install Grub onto to the A drive, the existing M SATA drive that was already in there with Mint 18 installed. I shut it down, tried to reboot, and it immediately failed. It said, couldn't see Grub, Grub was corrupt. Ugh, great, I killed the laptop. Well, not killed it, but I wasn't too phased. So booted back up the Mint 18 CD live boot, reinstalled Mint 18 on the MSATA primary drive that it already had. By the way, I wasn't too fussed about doing this because the T430 had the OS installed on the main drive and that was it. I hadn't done anything really to it to set it up. So me killing and having to reinstall its OS was no biggie. But anyway, I reinstalled the OS. It booted back up fine. And I could see that it still had Mint 18 installed on the NVMe drive and all the files and directories were still there. Then I realized I couldn't see the grub on Mint 18 when it boots up anyway. It wasn't giving me the options of selecting OSs, which you can get it to do. 
I had to look up here how to make the grub visible, and I did that. When I did that, having reinstalled the OS on the main drive and having left the NVMe install on the NVMe drive as it was, I noticed in the grub both the drives were available. So I booted up, I scrolled down to the NVMe drive, I selected that, it came up with one error. I will show you this in a second because I'm going to do it on here. But that quickly flicked through the error and it booted up. I thought, wait, is that really booting into Mint 18 on the NVMe? I looked at which drive it was using, which I'll show you in a second, and lo and behold, it had booted up using the NVMe drive. So this is a very Heath Robinson way of doing it. I basically killed an install of the OS in order to make the OS visible on another drive. I'm not saying this is the best way of doing it, but it worked. This now is bootable on an NVMe drive on a T430 classic ThinkPad without any hardware mods whatsoever in terms of shoving things onto the motherboard and shorting pins out and anything like that. So it worked. I'll boot it up in a second so you can see what I mean. Okay, I'm now going to boot up the T430 so you can see what I mean about the boot sequence being a bit weird. After this video, I might set the grub so it becomes invisible again to see if it speeds up the login. The reason I'm doing this is I want to see how much faster this is than using the MSATA. I can already see it's faster. I switched on the T430 to test it with a physical timer and it took even with me having to use the keyboard to select the right OS and press enter to go past the error it threw up a bit quicker. It still only took just under 18 seconds to go from hitting the on button to being to the login prompt, which is already four seconds faster than the MSATA drive it has. So I'm pretty convinced it's booting off the NVMe, even without me jigging it to be a bit quicker without having to go through all those menus. So it works. Anyway, time to boot it up to show you what I mean. My hand will be in shot again, at least for switching it on and for hitting the few keys that need to be hit to speed up the install. I apologize for my hairy appendage being in shot. Selecting the OS, that took me a few seconds to do, there you go, point. There you go, it seemed a bit slow at that time, <laughs> maybe it was having a bad day, but when I did it timed, it took 17 seconds to go from me pressing the on button to this screen here. Now let's log in just so you can see what I mean about the knowing it was logging on the NVMe drive rather than the MSATA it's got in. The MSATA drive in this is a one terabyte. The NVMe drive it's got is just a 256 gigabyte drive. Just a cheap one I picked up for about a tenner on eBay, maybe 15 quid. Um, by the way, I'll come back to a little bit about the form factors and the NVMe drives available in a second. Let's log in. There we go, plonk straight in. So how do I know that it's done the NVMe drive rather than the MSATA? Because they both have an identical install of Linux, Mint, of Linux Mint 18 on them. Here's how I knew. By pulling up the home directory, I could see that the size of the free space on the home folder was 221 gigabytes, which given the size of the install of Linux Mint 18 means that was the 256 gigabyte drive. You can see on the list of drives, Underneath file system, it has the one terabyte volume, which is the MSATA drive that the main drive has the OS installed on. But this is now running Linux Mint 18 on the NVMe drive installed into the express card slot on the side. So I have done it. No hardware mods required beyond sticking in the express card to the side of it. Now, there are some limitations, not big ones, with the PC Express card NVMe adapter I've got in that you can't fit longer form factor NVMe drives onto it without it sticking out the side a bit. This is only a problem if you want a hard drive over one terabyte, really. I mean, the one terabyte drives you can get in the 22 millimeters by 42, which is the biggest ones that will fit and still sit inside your laptop without poking out. I have a larger two terabyte one because they're cheaper. Uh, if I wanted to buy a one, uh, if I wanted to buy a two terabyte, if I wanted to buy a two terabyte small form factor 42 millimeter one, they're like 180 quid. Whereas if you want to buy the longer, I don't know, camera 60 or 80 millimeter ones, 
they cost much less. It cost me under seventy pounds for one of those for a two terabyte one, but they will stick out a bit. But if you're not that bothered about the size, if you, if one terabyte is enough for you, one terabyte ones you can get in the small form factor. So and for cheaper than the two terabyte, obviously. So yeah, so you could run a one terabyte NVMe drive without it bulging out the side as your principal drive. Uh, just change the grub order so it comes up the NVMe install on that card first, which is what I'm going to do to this one. I'm also going to do speed tests with this thing, but I'm going to wait until I've done the second install to prove I can do it reliably twice. So I'm going to install it all again on the two terabyte one, and that'll be the next video. But there you go. You can, by buying one of many available versions of the Express card NVMe adapters that's available on AliExpress slash Alibaba, you can, for about 16 to 20 pounds, get an adapter that will turn an NVMe, turn your PC Express card slot into an NVMe drive slot, and it is faster than MSATA or SATA slots. About two and a half or more times quicker, apparently, than MSATA is. So I'll do some testing with that, but for now, I hope this video was useful and has inspired you to do more, and just let's just keep using those amazing classic era ThinkPads for as long as we can, as boosted as we can, because they run faster than most of the laptops you can buy down the supermarkets anyway. Anyway, until the next video, whatever that may be, probably a bit more on the NVMe stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. And until that next one, to all my listeners, viewers, and subscribers, take care. Masters, mistresses, the doctor requires materials in order to maintain the TARDIS and ensure continued functionality. He similarly requires carbon-based comestibles to sustain his own biological functions and existence. Master would never say this, but he requires aid beyond that supplied by this unit in order to acquire these. To aid the doctor in his various tasks and creations, this can be most effectively achieved via Patreon or Substack subscriptions, or through donations directly to PayPal. Or if you desire physical goods in return for your contributions, written accounts of my travels with the doctor are also available on Amazon. Links are in the description below. Thank you, masters, mistresses.